Hey everyone, Mr. Piano Tech here. Today I'm going to show you how I do a pitch raise. So today we're going to talk about pitch raises. So I, this is something that I encounter uh, very regularly in the field and I'm sure you will too. So what do I consider a pitch raise? Well anything more than five cents flat I recommend doing the pitch raise process on. Um, anything less than that can typically be handled in one tuning um, depending on the setting that the piano's in. So anything more than five cents, I recommend the uh, pitch raise, uh, which is two tunings in one session. Sometimes you may have to come back and do a third. It just depends on how far out it is. So make it clear to the customer why it needs to be done. Um, and keep in mind, it's not your fault that the piano has been neglected for so many years and that it's gonna take some work to get it back up to where it should be. Most customers understand this. Um, and they figure it's gonna take some work to get things back to where they should be. So once it's stabilized, um, then the piano can go back on a regular tuning schedule. If it's used pretty often, I recommend twice a year. If it's kind of more a piece of furniture, once a year should be fine, uh, just to kind of keep the pitch where it should be. So once you determine that a pitch raise needs to be done, um, next uh, you need to determine if it can be done. So why might it not be possible to do a pitch raise? Um, it really comes down to the condition of the piano. So you need to take a close look at the condition of the strings, the pin block, uh, the bridges, um, and the overall structural integrity of the piano. Just remember, you're going to be adding potentially thousands of pounds of tension back onto it and you need to make sure it can handle it. Okay, so uh, start by looking at the strings. Um, are they rusty? A lot of times they will be, and if they are, um, how bad is the rust? Uh, you're gonna wanna check the uh, pin block um, to make sure that the pins can hold the tension um, of the extra bit that you're gonna be putting on them when you do the pitch raise and check the bridges uh, pretty closely, uh, especially for cracks. Uh, when you add more tension, if you have cracks, um, you're gonna potentially make it quite a bit worse. These are all things that need to be addressed before a pitch raise can be done. So what if everything looks pretty good, but you're not quite sure if the strings can handle it? Uh, what I do in this situation is first consult with a customer and make sure that they're okay with you doing this. Um, but if I need to check the uh, condition of the strings, uh, what I'll do is I'll raise one note up in each octave. Maybe I'll do like all the Fs or all the Cs, bring them up to where it should be and see if they can handle it. Uh, you'll know pretty quickly if it's gonna be a problem. And then just see how it does, but just make sure you get the uh, customer's permission before doing this. So what to do about rust? Um, if it's to the point where the strings need to be replaced, then the strings just need to be replaced. Um, however, I find that a lot of pianos that have some rust on them, um, some rust on the strings, and I'm going to do a pitch raise, uh, what I recommend doing is first pull the tension down on the note you're about to tune or just the one string you're gonna tune, pull it down and then go up with it. I find a lot of times if you go flat first, it'll pop loose any spots of rust that may be stuck somewhere before you raise the pitch up. Uh, if you just go straight for raising the pitch up, you're most likely gonna break them. Um, but I've gotten really good results out of just lowering the pitch a little bit and sometimes you'll even hear it pop, just lower it and um, and then go up with it. So when it comes to doing a pitch raise, I recommend two tunings and one visit. Um, the first one is going to be uh, bringing the pitch sharp of where it needs to be, and then the second one is more of a fine tuning done immediately after the first. Um, now say immediately, uh, it's, this is a good chance to get some other work you may need to, to get done. So if it needs a pitch raise, it may need some other work, maybe voicing, hammer reshaping, uh, some repairs, things like that. Uh, I will typically do the first tuning, so I'll do the, the pitch raise where I raise it a little sharp. Um, I'll do whatever work needs to be done uh, to give the strings a chance to stretch out, and then I'll come back and do the fine tuning. So if you find the piano is very, very flat, I mean like 100 or more cents flat, um, you're probably gonna have to come back and do a third tuning. I usually give it about two or three weeks uh, for everything to stretch out and settle. Um, that's worked out pretty well for me, so if your schedule permits it, um, that's what I'd recommend. Just keep in mind, um, every piano is a little bit different. Um, each pitch is gonna be a little bit different and each pitch, pitch raise is gonna be a little bit different. So you just kind of have to play it by ear. 
So now when I do a pitch raise, I typically use Tune Lab um, for the first one to get things started. It speeds up the process and helps it go a little quicker because um, I, I do a handful of tunings each day, so I need to be able to work as quickly as possible. Um, if you're not using an ETD or electronic tuning device, um, I recommend using the following formula. So first determine how many cents flat the piano is, and then you're going to tune it sharp by half that many cents uh, for the first tuning before you come back through and do the second tuning, which will be more of a fine tuning. So for example, if the piano is 20 cents flat, tune it 10 cents sharp um, for the first tuning, and then when you come back to do the second one, it should be pretty close um, after it's done some settling. Now this is important, do not exceed 30 cents sharp. So if it's 100 cents flat, don't go 50 cents sharp. Uh, max it out at 30 cents sharp. Um, any more than that, and you really run the risk of breaking strings. So again, determine how many cents flat it is, um, half that, tune it that many sharp. So 20 cents flat, tune it 10 cents sharp for the first tuning, um, and then you should be pretty stable um, when you come back to do the second one. Okay, now I'm gonna show you my process for doing pitch raises. Okay, so we're out here in the shop, and I'm gonna show you the process that I use to perform pitch raises in people's homes. Um, so first we're gonna go into Tune Lab, and I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna do another video on, on Tune Lab one of these days to show you how I have everything set up. But uh, there's a couple different ways you can get to it, um, but you're gonna to wanna to find overpull. So overpull, once it's, you start the pre-measuring, it's gonna take a measurement of each C, E, and G of each octave, um, and just to read how flat it is. So sometimes when you're doing this, a customer will, will interrupt you, um, or somebody will be talking, it'll take an incorrect reading. When that happens, you can just tap back down to that note um, that you're reading, and then it'll take the new reading, and it'll continue on from there. Okay, so what we're gonna do is look at the pre-measuring. So we're gonna hit this start, and as soon as I hit this, again, it's gonna start measuring every um, C, E, and G um, to see just how far flat it is. Okay, so now what it's done is it has measured all of those notes um, and it's gonna configure how far sharp it wants you to tune all of these. So what I typically do at this point, um, I'll go um, to where I typically start, so at F3 to start your um, temperament octave. And um, just, I'm gonna switch this to manual for now so it won't jump out of the way where I'm showing you. So as you see here, um, F3, it wants you to tune it sharp, almost a full cent. Um, and as you go through, you'll see that they change. Now, the way that I recommend doing this is instead of just tuning, like if you're doing the temperament and you have them all muted off or, or the uh, unison's muted off, um, and you're just tuning the center string, I would recommend you tune all three strings of each note as you go up. Um, otherwise, it's going to stretch uh, at a little bit different um, amount at a different time. So um, go through, do um, your center F, um, and then tune the left and right unisons to it. Um, go to F sharp, do the same, G, do the same. Um, and I will follow this uh, all the way up the piano. And then once I get to the top, I'll start at E3 and work my way all the way down. Um, and then um, by the time you get back to F3 again, after you've done tuning the piano, it will have stretched. I found it drops pretty close to where it needs to be um, on pitch. So. Uh, don't worry about stabilizing it too, too much, you know, hammering it in and stabilizing it that, that sharp, um, that sharp amount, because you don't really want it to stay there anyway, you want it to stretch back down. Um, but you'll notice here, so if I um, were to tune F, um, we'll bring that up, and then um, the next one actually has the same, so G wants it one cent sharp, G sharp 1.1. It depends on um, how flat they were um, when you first did it. So this, um, if you remember uh, me mentioning don't go above 30 cents sharp when you're doing this um, in the formula, uh, Tune Lab will limit you to that. So it, I've noticed it will not go any more than 30 cents sharp when performing a pitch raise. So it does keep you from going past where you should be. 
Um, so just going to show you here, again, we're staying in manual note. Typically, I will put this in auto all and it'll follow me up and follow me down. Just depends on what I'm doing. I've noticed sometimes, um, I don't know if it's Tune Lab or if it's, um, I'm using a little iPad 2 mini here I've had for years. Um, I don't know if it's it or what, but sometimes I've noticed it has a hard time hearing really, really low notes properly. So I'll switch it to manual and um, just to make sure it's, it's listening to the one that I want it to listen to. So, uh, so if we go back down to F3 and we go up the octaves, you'll see, see an octave up, it wants it 2.1 uh, cent sharp. And you'll see, this will show you how far it wants you to go with them all the way up to C8. Um, and then we'll go back down here again and going down 1.2 cents. So yeah, it, this piano is not that bad. Um, what I see a lot of times is typically someone will have their piano either in pretty good tune on a regular basis or it's way out. Um, I don't have too many people that'll tune it like every two or three years. They're either pretty regular with it or it's been forever since they've done it. So um, I, I find a lot of my over pulls are around um, 10, 15, even 20 cents thereabouts um, of how much it wants me to, to pull it over. Uh, that's pretty, pretty common to what I run into out in the field. But so anyway, um, that's how I do it. So I just take the pre-measurement um, and go through, um, do the tuning um, as sharp as it wants you to do it. Um, and then, um, then you're, what you're gonna do, come down here and uh, hit the stop and I'll bring you right back um, to normal tuning. And then I would go back to F3 and um, put an auto all and go through the, uh, the tuning like regular. It's gonna be pretty close to where it should be. I find that sometimes you may have to pull the mid range down a little bit. And uh, once you get into this first break into the uh, treble, you're gonna have to start pushing it up because it's gonna go a little flat. But so anyway, um, that's the way that I do it. Um, again, one of these days I'm gonna do a, a, a video just on Tune Lab. I've been using it for years. Um, it's, it's a pretty handy program and definitely helps speed up the process throughout the day. So, so anyway, that does it for uh, uh, this portion of uh, me going through the process with you. So that does it. Um, uh, thank you for watching and hopefully this was a helpful guide for you in doing pitch raises. Any questions, comments, snide remarks, leave them below and as always, stay tuned.